Welcome to TMS Insights, the May edition, with Jeremy Hook and a wounded Ben Clark from a <laughs> shoulder operation, but uh, still uh, here hard at work and ready to bring you what's been a busy uh, couple of weeks to start the, the month of May, Ben. I mean, we've had a lot of news and obviously the markets had a sell-off uh, bond market related overall that's caused quite a few concerns. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's been a pretty sharp correction and as you often find that corrections occur when you least expect them to. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone had their eye on that 6,000 psychological level and we got within a whisker of it and then, of course, a 7% pullback. Um, you know, I, I would say that in rising markets, normally sort of 5 to 7% corrections are the most that you'll see yep. on the way up and, um, and we feel that, you know, things are starting to settle down and this may, you know, there's a bit of value starting to creep back into the market. Um, yeah. But also, we wanted to bring to clients' attention what's going on in the bond market, um, which I don't think is something that everyone necessarily sees that well. No, and it's a really important thing. I guess if you look at the longer-term history here, we've been on a bond market rally for probably 30 years. And with rates having gone down so much, that means bond prices go up. Now, what's going to happen at some stage, and we can't be precise on timing, is that that's going to revert back. Interest rates are going to go up. That's right. And that's going to cause sell-off in the bond market. And when it happens, even though we know at some stage it's likely to happen, it's not going to happen in an orderly fashion. That's right. And and I think, you know, sort of when clients are sort of thinking, okay, well, what does that mean for equities? Mm. Um, the, the most immediate sort of implications of a, of a sell-off that we've seen, and we'll just put up a graph here of the, of the Australian 10-year bond yield, so not the price of the bond, but the yield that that bond is paying. And you can see in that graph, there's been an incredible, um, very steep run up in the yield. And that really comes on the back of a huge global sell off in bonds. So this has happened um, in, in government paper right around the world. Yeah. And, and how that flows into equity markets is A, whenever you see a lot of volatility in other asset classes, it will generally lead to volatility flowing through into separate asset classes such as shares. Mm. Also, um, the, the risk-free rate that we use to help value companies has risen and therefore valuations should potentially pull back. And, and thirdly, of course, um, you know, a, a big global hedge fund that could only get 2.2% in Australian government debt um, a couple of weeks ago and can now get 29 mm. Well, the relative attraction of CBA or Telstra's dividend yield is a bit less and therefore the share price can come under some pressure. Mm. However, it does feel like um, the last couple of nights we have seen um, some resumption of buying in, in, in bonds around the world and yeah. subsequently yields are falling again and the markets seem to be settling down and we think we'll continue to settle down. Yeah, I think and the thing that, that, that happens when you see a bond market unwind is it will throw up opportunities in the share market. Short sell downs, we like to see there's potential opportunities to be able to buy good quality stocks at better than normal prices. And so that's why when we talk about the need for asset allocation and keeping cash, it's really on a positive level because it gives us the chance to take advantage of opportunities that things like this bond market volatility can throw up. Ben, um, in all of that, we've had a busy week with the banks reporting. So right. um, we saw Westpac, ANZ, Commonwealth and NAB. Yes. And we really thought the NAB numbers, though they've gone into a trading halt ahead of a capital raising, yep. look really quite interesting. Yeah, and, and this is the other reason our market has fallen. International equity markets have held up quite well during this bond market sell-off. Our market hasn't held up quite so well. And half of the fall in our market has actually just been the four banks falling. Mm. Um, and that's been um, a weaker than expected result from Westpac, um, a flat result from Com a trading update from Commonwealth Bank, yeah. which was a bit weaker than expected. And, you know, these banks were trading on sort of premium earnings multiples and hence, you know, a, a pretty decent sort of sell-off in that sector. NAB, though... Um, which has been the ugly duckling sort of for quite very some much time. So. Yeah. Um, has, has made some quite positive initiatives, had the best of the earnings growth in the, in the season. Yep. And this, this capital raising, 2 for 25 rights issue, we'll see the stock when it relists on Tuesday, potentially is the not only best value, but the highest earnings growth of the four big banks. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I really like what the management are, are doing at NAB. Um, NAB has long traded at a discount to its peers. At the moment, it's roughly on a P of about 12 times forward earnings. Mm. 
compare that to Combank at 14 and a half, even after this sell-off it's had, still quite a big discount there. Yeah. And, and NAB has embarked on the largest rights issue in Australian corporate history. So it's a big capital raising, $5.5 billion is being raised. Um, shareholders will be able to participate. Um, but the main thing that they're doing is they're actually going to offload their UK assets into a new company, which will be spun off to NAB shareholders. They're, a, a lot of that money will be used to make sure that company is properly capitalised. capitalised. Yeah. Um, and it's going to make the NAB headline stock a much cleaner, simpler vehicle, which the market has just been begging for for the last decade as mm. it's underperformed. And I think, although it's not, you know, the greatest solution, it's better than doing nothing and it's good yeah. that they're getting on and with it and doing something. So I also think Tuesday could be an interesting day if you're not in NAB mm -hmm. to, um, to participate in what has been the worst of the big four yeah. performing banks. Um, anyway, but another spin-off that's coming up. Um, yeah, uh, BHP Billiton uh, Wednesday night in Perth did announce that the vote had got up to demerge South 32 from BHP. That means on the 15th Friday, um, the 15th of May, will be the last day BHP Billiton trades come entitlement to the South 32 shares. Post that date, from Monday the 18th of May, shareholders in BHP will get one additional share free in South 32. We'd expect an adjustment in the BHP Billiton share price. But the genesis of all of this is trying to make, again, like we were just talking about NAB, BHP Billiton a simpler beast. It'll hold the tier one assets, the longer life, higher margin, better quality businesses. It'll focus on what it does best, the mega mines and copper like you know, Olympic Dam and Escondida in Chile. It'll have the quality iron ore businesses of the Pilbara. It's going to be big in the petroleum and energy games through the Gulf of Mexico and Northwest Shelf. So it's going to be some exciting stuff, Ben. And yeah. uh, uh, BHP as a business, it, you know, this is a time when I think that they're not obviously enjoying the best of the cycle in the resources, but there's a good time to focus on the things that you have as your better assets, your trophy assets, and spinning off the rest. So South 32, I don't think we're going to want to be longer term holders of. The uh, the money more likely to move across to BHP Billiton, but it's an exciting uh, demerger which allows a, a company to focus on what it does best and the top end of the market, that's uh, a very good thing to do. Yeah, and, and we'll be um, uh, emailing clients, um, you know, in the accolade service to advise them that paperwork has been received. Um, there are two options here. You can actually sell your South 32 shares directly through the company mm. um, or you can receive them and sit on them and then decide to sell them on market and we're recommending the the latter option um, mainly because we don't have any idea what we're selling South 32 at if we sell it through the shareholder facility um, we'd rather sort of have the shares spun out and make a decision when we believe is a good time to sell but I think we're both in agreement that um, you know from my thoughts with South 32 are a if BHP doesn't want to own these assets, we probably don't want to own these assets yeah. on behalf of clients. And B, if you look at companies that have been spun out of BHP over the last couple of decades, none of them have done well. Um, in fact, most have been total disasters if you look at Blue Scope and One Steel. So um, our thoughts will be at some stage fairly soon probably to sell, but not through the facility at a, at a price which we have no idea of. So an email would be coming through with that, but we just thought it'd be worthwhile sort of chatting about you know what's yeah. actually happening and and what south 32 is yep exactly right so a couple of big things coming up next week including the federal budget as well which we'll be providing an update on we look forward to bringing you that news next week